First Lady Wiley. Let's just give an ovation for the First Lady. Amen. And the entire prayer breakfast committee. My name is Angela Martin, and I have a prayer meeting on the West Side actually every first Saturday. It's called Wonderful Prayer. So I'm all the way over on this side where you all leave. I came over here. A beautiful New Zion Upper Room. That's where we meet every first Saturday of the month. So you're welcome to come and join us on uh, 1950 West 13th Street. We're not a church. We're not a denomination. It's just women coming together for prayer. Amen. Women that know that they need God. That's all it is. And I met uh, Precious Khadija at Wonderful Prayer, and she is such, such a blessing to me. I'm so happy to be with her at her church today as well. I brought two CDs today. I have a CD. Uh, it's a prayer CD from the prayer meeting, and what I did was I took some excerpts from the prayer meeting and I attached it to house music. Got any house heads in here? It's okay. You a holy house head. Say, I'm a holy house head. So I promise you, if you get that CD, it is going to bless you. It literally changes the atmosphere wherever you are. We only have a few. I think we have maybe 20, 20 of them. So right after I'm done, um, the service is over, you can go out and purchase that. And then I also have a CD uh, that I, uh, a single that I wrote. I actually wrote it while I was in prayer. I was just worshiping and the song just began to flow out of me. So I recorded that and you can get both of those today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So do you know everybody at your table? Yeah. Everybody know everybody at your table? If not, introduce yourself. We're gonna be here for a minute. I'm just going to talk to you and give you the revelation that the Lord has given me for uh, this word today. Okay. Tonda? Tonda, you said? Tonda. All right. Hey, Tonda. <laughs> All right. We're going to go into the word. Okay. So I believe in Proverbs 18:21, And if we're ready for the word. Y'all ready? Do I have your attention? All right. Proverbs 18.21 says uh, that the power of life and death is in your tongue. That's where the power of life and death is. So when I teach, I, am, I will always encourage you to talk back to me, okay? Because you are going to set yourself free with your own tongue. Amen? Amen? So many of us are so used to getting other people to help us be free. No, you're going to set yourself free. So I'm going to set myself free with my own tongue. Amen. So our theme today, I love this theme, recovering all. Recovering all. Uh, the word recover means to recuperate, to get better, to convalesce, to regain one's strength, to get stronger, to get back on one's feet, or to return to a better state of health, mind, or strength. Say recover. Recover. Say recover. recover. The prefix re means again, and it also means indicating repetition. So when you say that you want to recover something, what you is saying that what you want to recover, you had it before. Amen? Amen. Amen. You recover what you've had before. Amen. So what we believe uh, that's going to happen to us today is we're going to get back what we lost. Amen? Amen? Say, I'm going to get back what I lost. What I lost. So I asked God, you know, when, when um, Sister Lo reached out to me to come, I was so happy to come. And um, when I got the title, Recovering All, immediately, I'm sure a lot of you, when you hear that, you immediately think about David and Ziglag when God told him to go and recover all. How many th think about that? Amen. Yeah. The story of David and Ziglag told him to go and get everything. All right. He said that. And so I said, Lord, but what I need to know is what are you saying to the women of Rock of Ages today, the women that will be in this setting today? And the Holy Spirit said to me to tell you, when you entered this room today, you entered the recovery room. Amen. Say, this is, this is the recovery room. So now you know why I'm dressed like a nurse. So, 
you're to the recovery room today. So I'm dressed like a nurse today. Because in the recovery room, it is seldom that doctors are in there. When a patient goes to recovery, you are in the hands of the nurses. The only time a doctor really comes back to a recovery room is when there is an emergency or things aren't going, progressively going the way that he thought they should go. But other than that, the nurse is in the recovery room. So I also brought you hospital ID bands today. I reached out to Khadija, I said, so what are the ladies' colors? Tell me what the ladies gonna wear. See, I know the ladies gonna have a color. You know, we gonna have a color. You and your girlfriends go bowling. Okay, we're red. We going bowling. We're red. Just everybody wear red. We're gonna, everybody gonna wear red. So she told me you were wearing pink today, so I had my assistant Jamari, we searched for some pink hospital bands. Hold up your hospital band. Everyone has one? Yes. You got your hospital band. You got your hospital band. So what the hospital band usually is for is to identify the patient. So the nurse will know which patient this is. But today, your hospital bands are going to identify what you want to recover. So I want you to write on there. Do you have your Sharpies? Do you have your Sharpies? Can someone please help Khadija? Please help her. Please help her. Okay, you have your Sharpie, so what you wanna do is you're gonna write on your hospital band what you want to recover. You wanna recover your joy. You wanna recover your peace. You wanna recover your money. You wanna recover your marriage. Whatever you want to recover, that's what I want you to write on your hospital band. Because you're going to identify what you want to get back. How you doing, sweetie? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hi. So we're gonna make sure we do that. Okay, you ready? Put your hospital band on. Make sure you put that on, okay? Okay, are we ready to move forward? You ready to move forward in the word? Are you ready to move forward in the word? Okay, let's move forward, all right. So let's talk about the recovery room. The recovery room is also called the PACU. PACU stands for the Post Anesthesia Care Unit. Say post, post. Anesthesia, anesthesia Care Unit. Care unit. Care unit. Now, this is where a patient is taken after an operation or a surgical procedure. The recovery room is not just constructed haphazardly. It is strategically designed. When you go into the recovery room, you will see soft colors. They are specifically chosen for the recovery room. Very soft colors. You'll never go into a recovery room and see red. Red walls. I personally like red. My kitchen is red. Yeah, red walls in my kitchen. You too, Lil? You got red kitchen? I got red walls in my kitchen. My floor is black and white. Bam! Coming out. Bam! I even painted my front door of my house red. You ride down my street, bang! Let it juice. I like pops of color. But in the recovery room, you'll never see that. Also in the recovery room, you have indirect lighting. The lighting does not shine right on the patient. It's indirect lighting. The ceiling of the recovery room is soundproof. It's a soundproof ceiling there. The recovery room has special equipment that controls and eliminates noise. There is also a special area in the recovery room for patients that are perhaps a little noisier than others. So perhaps when they came through surgery and uh, came through the anesthesia, they woke up in more pain. So for those patients, they have a, a separate area in the recovery room. So we're in the recovery room. Y'all with me? Yes. Say we're in the recovery room. Yes, we are. We're in the recovery room. All right, so when I teach, I always like to, you know, figure out my sections too, you know. Uh, the recovery room has sections that have more noisier people. You know, the ones really gonna talk back. I think my sections might be over here. Is, is this my noisy crew? Y'all gonna be with me today? I'm glad you're close to me. I'm glad you're close to me. 
So what happens after an operation is take, has taken place, you go into the recovery room, uh, that means you have had some extractions, some cutting, and some incisions. So let's read our first scripture together. You see Colossians 2.11? You see that? You see the scripture? Ready, read. So that's what's happening in the recovery room. So when you came in today, God is going to circumcise some things, some cutting away. How many of you need some things to be cut away out of your life? You've been trying to do it. You've been trying. But that's what we're going to, what's going to happen today from the recovery room. The recovery room is also where you regain consciousness. Say regain. Regain. Consciousness. There's our prefix again. Remember re, indicating again, and repetition. You regain consciousness. So what that means is, after you come out of surgery, it's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to wake up. Wake up your dream again. We're in recovery right now. It's time to wake up. Wake up your business plan again. You started it. You started the research. You got all those files in your office and you put it to the side. So wake up your dream again. It's time for you to wake up. Wake up your ministry. So many people are fighting for a pulpit. Ministry is everywhere. It's everywhere. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. It's so funny to me because people try to title me. They don't know what to call me. It's funny to me. Uh, evangelist, I said, no, 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 no license, no papers. Mm -mm. Evangelist, pastor, preacher, no, no, I'm just available. I'm available. My name is Angela Martin, that's all I need. But we're always ministering, so wake up your ministry again. Wake up your joy again. Yes, You know you used to be the life of the party. It didn't start till you got there. What happened to your joy? So you want to wake up your, your joy again. You definitely want to do it. Wake up your smile again. Do you know you can literally change someone else's mood when you smile? Don't take that lightly. Wake up your smile again. You know, you can't get on the metro going to work like this. Anybody sitting there? Can you move yourself? No, 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 no. Wake up your smile. Have you ever smiled at someone and at first they may not smile back and then after a while you look at them again and they'll start going, Amen. I love to do it to little children. I absolutely love it. Kids love me. I think it's my size. I think they feel like they can relate to me. My sister Jamari is with me. Everywhere I go, kids just run to me. I'm like, okay. I love children, especially babies. I just love them. I can't believe I didn't have a baby. I don't know what that is. I have many though. But little children, I love. Uh, Jamari and I were together this weekend. There was a little girl and she was with her mom. And I told Jamari, she's going to be my best friend before we leave here. Just watch this. Just watch. Just watch. So we were playing and she was over there with her mom. Then I, I smiled at her. Then she would smile. After a while, I smiled and she was like. <laughs> and before I left, she took a picture with me. One for, her, her mom was, she's taking pictures with me. Because my smile transformed her. Yeah. Don't take that lightly. Yeah. So wake up your smile again. Wake up your gift and your talent again. You know you love to sing. Get back in the choir. Yeah. director, tell him sometime I might have to miss, but I want to get back in the choir. Get back on the praise team. Wake that thing up again. Wake up. It's time to wake up. Wake up your ideas again. That idea, that thing that God told you to do, that creative idea, it's time for you to wake that up again. God has an expiration date on his ideas. I believe it. I really believe that. Say, God has an expiration date on the idea that he gave me. I honestly believe that. 
wake up your idea, because you're going to be watching Empire and Cookie Lions doing her thing. The commercial's going to come on, and it's going to be the idea that God gave you. And you're going to be sitting on your couch saying, I thought of that. And God is going to be like, you sure did. You didn't wake it up. Angela told you to wake it up. You should have listened to the lady in the white dress. She told you to wake up your idea. So I am going to wake up my idea. That thing could cause you to be a millionaire. If you wake it up. Say it again. So I am going to wake up my idea. Yes. We're going to wake it up. You don't know what yours is? Who's going to talk to me over here? I say something. I hear everything. Oh, I hear everything. Wake up your idea. Okay, let's read our second scripture. Let's read Revelations 3 and 2 together. Ready? Read. Wake up. When you wake up every morning, you know what God is saying to you? You have unfinished business. That's the only reason you get another day. It's because you have unfinished business. There is something else that you are supposed to be doing. Once again, say, I'm waking up. I'm waking up. My ideas. My ideas. You got to wake that thing up. Shake the person next to you. Say, wake up, girl. Wake up. Shake up. Say, wake up, girl. We got work to do. We got some money to get. Wake up. Wake up. All right, we're still in the recovery room. There are some certain things that you have to watch for while you're in recovery. One of the things that the nurses watch out for in recovery is the rise and fall of blood pressure. They have to pay real close attention to the patient's blood pressure, which means that you can't go off while you're in recovery. Watch your blood pressure. You can't fuss with your spouse all day when you're in recovery. Mm -mm. You can't constantly scream at your kids when you're in recovery. You gotta watch that pressure. Do this, bring it down. Come on, do this, watch me. Come on, bring it down, yeah. Bring that thing down. You can't go off on your co-workers and your boss. You can't do that while you're in recovery. You gotta watch your road rage when you're in recovery. Watch that road rage. No bird flipping when you're in recovery. Watch yourself. Watch your road rage. Funny story, I was driving in my car, and there was another car on the side of me, and another car in front was kind of going slow, and so the car on the side of me um, had road rage. So she was going off. I mean, she was going off, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm looking at her, she's going off, and she looked right in my face, and she said, Angela Martin, I said, yeah. How you doing? That's my name. She was like, oh my God. I said, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> yep, it's me. You gotta watch your road rage when you're in recovery. You cannot give people a piece of your mind when you're in recovery. Keep all of your mind. Say, I'm keeping all of my mind. Cause I'm in recovery. And I'm gonna need it. Can't get upset. Let's read our next scripture, Hebrews 12, 14. Let's read that together. Ready? Read. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Amen. All right. You got to be at peace with everyone when you're in recovery. Another thing that nurses watch uh, the patient for in recovery is re restlessness. Say restlessness. Restlessness. Say that again, restlessness. restlessness. You must be sure during this season of your life that you only take on assignments that are from God and not just because you're restless. 
You can't do things just because you're restless. I have never seen in all of my life so many busy people. Everybody is busy. Everybody. You know you have some busy sisters. Everybody is busy. And I think sometimes women, we take that multitasking characteristic we have, we just push it to the limit. We push it all the way. Everybody has a friend like this, I think. It might be you. We're not gonna talk about you. We're gonna talk about your friends today. We're not gonna talk about this as you. We're gonna talk about your friends today. But everybody, I think, has at least one friend like this. You'll call her, you know, you say, you know, let's go to let's go to lunch. Let's, let's go to lunch this weekend. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. I am not free until September 10th. I am not free. I'm not free. Because you know my daughter. My daughter is in dance, and she's in cheerleading and Girl Scouts, and then I have my son. My son is in football, basketball. He's on the hockey team. He's also in Boy Scouts. And you know, my husband, he doesn't feel like the kids need all of this, so he will not pick them up or take them. So I have to take my kids. I have to pick my kids up. I have to pick them up and take them. He will not take them. I said, no, my kids are going to have every opportunity. I'm putting them in everything because they're going to have every opportunity. So I just tell them, forget him. I'll pick them up, and I'll take them. Say she's restless. Say she's restless. Then she goes on. I'm a manager. You know, I'm a manager at my job right now. I'm a manager. And as a manager, we have to work mandatory overtime. So I am working 55 hours a week because I am a manager. And then if I get certified, if I get certified, I'll get 10000 more dollars on my salary. So now I take classes on Saturday night. Because I am going to get that $10,000 because I am going to be certified. <laughs> Say she's restless. She's restless. Oh yeah, you know one like that. <laughs> now she's got all this on her plate. All this on her plate. And she'll, you know what? I saw a lady in the dollar store. I was in the dollar store and I saw this lady. And she was like, oh my God, your makeup is so gorgeous. I'm a Mary Kay consultant. You should come to one of my meetings. So reluctantly, 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 I went. And oh my God, I was so inspired. All the women there at Mary Kay. So I must get a pink Cadillac. <laughs> I am gonna get most of the sales, and I know Jesus wants me to have it because Jesus said I am the head and not the tail. So I am going to sell every Mary Kay product, and I want you to have my first party because you are my best friend, and I want you to be restless like me. Say she's restless. Watch that. Watch that. You have to watch that. People are running into themselves. My mother, bless her heart, I love my mother so much. I spent the day with my mother yesterday. She's a church mother, she's 87 years old. She'll be 87 next month. And uh, my mother would always say, Mother Martin, I love her, I love her so much. I love my mama. But she would always say, some people, the devil is running behind them and they don't even know it. <laughs> Just chasing them. Say restlessness. The spirit of restlessness will literally schedule God right out of your daily life. Right out of it. It's a sneaky spirit. Because you'll think you're doing something good for yourself. It's very subliminal and insidious. But it's a sneaky spirit and you don't even realize it. 25 hour, 24 hours will have expired and you will not have spent one minute alone with God. Not one minute. Hallelujah. Yes. You mean to tell me he gives you 24 hours and he can't have at least 20 minutes? 24 hours of protection. 24 hours of taking care of you. 24 hours of providing for you. 24 hours of keeping you healthy. 24 hours of taking care of your kids. 24 hours of taking care of your husband. You can't give them 20 minutes. Your sister said 20 minutes. 20 minutes. It's sad. It's a sad thing. It's a sad thing. Then we go to church on Sunday. Go to church on Sunday. You whole seven days. So it's like I'm gonna go to church on Sunday, like we're doing God a favor. You know? 
I am going to church on Sunday. Like we're doing them a favor. Then we come into the church service. Tell the pastor, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. Feed me in these two hours for a whole nother seven days. Feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. Give me everything I need, everything I need. All I got is two hours for you. You better hurry up, hurry up. That's what we do. I feel sorry for pastors. My heart goes out to them. Because of the flock and the weight of the flock. When really the pastor is just to lead you along the way. everybody he's just supposed to lead you then we go to church my heart goes out to uh, praise and worship leaders where's the dear sister that led us in worship today oh God bless her what's her name repeat after me God do something special for Dina this week Father in Jesus name bless her for her Bless her for her faithfulness. Bless her for her dedication. In the name of Jesus, we just lift her up to you, God. Bless her, God. Strengthen her, God. Make her way prosperous. Open doors for Dina. In the name of Jesus, keep her healthy. Keep her strong, God. In Jesus' name, do something special for her. This week, God, for her faithfulness, I decree and declare, I will hear her testimony. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Khadija, you let me know what happens to her this week. She's going to be blessed. You reach out to me. She's going to be blessed. Something special. Yes, amen. Amen. So we're still in the recovery room. That's where we are. We're still in the recovery room. So watch that re restlessness, okay? So I'm going to watch this restlessness. Yes, I'm only going to do things that are God ordained and not because I am just restless let's read this scripture uh, Isaiah 28 and 12 let's read that together did we read that? let's read that together 28 and 12 Let the weary west. We're going to listen now, right? Yes. Are we going to listen? Yes. We're going to listen. Okay, we're still in the recovery room. Another thing that happens in the recovery room are the nurses are constantly washing their hands. When I was studying this, uh, I was studying also some of the, um, the list of to, the to-do list, the duties of the nurses, and every so often they'll say, do this, 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 then it'll say, wash your hands. He'll say, do this, this, this. He'll say, wash your hands. Because your hands have to definitely be very pure and sanitized while you're in recovery. So while we're in recovery, you cannot touch everything. You cannot touch everything. Watch what you commit to while you're in recovery. Pray about everything. I don't care if it's something as simple as going to dinner. Right. Ask God, am I supposed to be in the seat at that table with that group? Right. You, you, have, you have to watch it when you're in recovery. Because you must keep your hands clean. This is very, very important. Watch who you take a, a, a meeting with. Watch that. Be careful about that. I am... Um, I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, you, you need to have to pray about everything. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. they are they get a misconception of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying if someone calls and tells you, oh, you want to go to dinner on Saturday? I'm not saying, you know, you get off and like, God, in the name of Jesus, God, God, am I supposed to go? No, 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 no. no. Just say, I'll, I'll let you know, you know. The Bible tells us that the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. That's how God leads you. So just check your spirit. Say, am I, am I supposed to go here tonight? And when you're close to God and when you spend time with him in prayer, you'll feel a nudging. You'll feel a nudging. It's like, you know, I, I think I'm a pass. I think I'm a pass. The next time, maybe you can go. But always wait to get.
get clearance in your spirit. So that's what I mean when I say pray about things. You know, you're constantly in conversation with the Lord. We're praying about things. So he'll let you know. So when you're in recovery, you cannot touch everything. You cannot accept every opportunity. Even if it seems like it's a good one. Because you don't want a good one, you want a God one. You can't accept every invitation. Every party you're invited to does not mean you're supposed to go. You have to know if that's where you're supposed to be because you always want to be in the right place at the right time doing the right things with the right people. Say, I will always be in the right place at the right time doing the right things with the right people. All times. You can't even engage in every conversation when you're in recovery. There are some conversations that you cannot touch or engage in. I have, I have literally been in the midst of conversations with people, and when I feel that thing in my spirit going to gossip, mm -mm. back on up, back on up, back on up, back on up. Back on up. I'll stop in the middle of it and say, girl, what you cooking? What you cooking tomorrow? What you cooking tomorrow? Change it. Change that thing. Somebody's talking about the pastor. They got a little huddle talking about the pastor. You better get out of that. Touch not my anointing. Do my prophet no harm. Talking about the board, the first lady, talking about the church. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to keep your hands clean. I got to keep my hands clean. I can't touch that. Don't even be a part of that. You must keep your hands clean, your mouth clean, everything. You have to stay clean. Let's read James 4 and 8. Let's read that together. You ready? James 4 and 8. Come come here to God, and he will come here to you. 